Now, yesterday we were talking about this amazing documentary, The Light Bulb Conspiracy. I now have a permanent link to this documentary that, uh, uh, you know, I just found it absolutely amazing. And you've, you've got to watch it all the way through. I got some email from people saying, well, they're not even talking English. Well, it goes to English a little further in. The documentary is taking place all over the world. They're following these leads. It is well worth going through. It may be one of the most important documentaries you've ever seen. Because it underscores, it proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that this idea of forcing you to buy the same product over and over and over and over and over again is intentional. Not the model of, we'll come out with something better that you want to buy and freely choose to buy of your own free will, but we're going to design the product that you bought to fail in so many months, so many years, so that you are forced to buy a new one whether you want it or not. That, that is a fascist dictatorship right there. And I got a lot of response to this and that, that documentary. Please share it with all of your friends. It is so important to see this idea that when, when Edison's first light bulb, the prototype, you know, just ran and ran and ran. And when bulbs were first introduced onto the market, you know, they were guaranteed for, you know, 2,500 hours. There's that one example that's in that fire station in California has been burning nonstop for 100 years. And then the businessmen got together and said, well, you know, light bulbs that last forever doesn't do us any good. So we hereby decree that light bulbs will only last a thousand hours. You get busy designing something that will fail as quickly as it can so that we can force people to buy another one. That's that's the model. And that is a fascist approach to an economy. You are not given the choice of whether you want to buy something or not. You are forced to buy it. Like the little, uh, the little headphones you're forced to buy to have on your uh, cell phone when you're driving the car. The government says you must buy them. The lifespan of those things can be clocked with an egg timer. You go through a new one every, every few months. Cell phones are designed to last little more than a year. There was that story about how uh, Apple intentionally put a battery with an 18-month lifespan in the iPod and then said to everybody, well, you've got to buy a new iPod. Talked about the chip that would disable your printer after so many pieces of paper were, were, were printed to force you to buy a new one. It's intentional. Now, with that in mind, I just put up another video that just went public. Apparently, this just happened. We got a caller waiting on the line that was going to talk about this. The headline for this video is Nevada Health District Raids Picnic. And what the context of this video is, is this group of people who are into organic farming and farm their own food wanted to have a picnic. They were calling it from the farm to the fork, and it was basically they grew their own food and they were going to eat it. They had a certified chef there to prepare the food, and this bureaucratic busybody bitch shows up with this attitude of, I'm in charge here, And the short version of it is she made them destroy all the food because it didn't have the proper paperwork. It hadn't come from a corporation. They hadn't bought it at a store. Some corporate executive wasn't getting his piece of the action. The government wasn't able to tax this. We can't have people just growing their own food in this country. It'll destroy the economy as we uh, have designed it to be. And the upshot is in a country with massive starvation, People on food stamps all over the place, homeless people everywhere. This woman orders this group of farmers, organic farmers, to destroy the food they had just harvested. They spent all season growing, had just harvested, were going to eat it, which is what you're supposed to do with food you grow yourself. And I know this because I'm a farm kid myself. I used to do this as a kid. Go out to the garden, grab something, bring it in, cook it and eat it. That was part of the joy of living on a farm. This woman makes these people destroy the food, not just destroy it. I mean, they're basically saying once it's cut from the plant, it's toxic biohazard. It's not toxic biohazard. It's an ear of corn. And she makes them pour bleach all over this ruined food so they can't even feed it to the pigs because it didn't come from a corporation. You know, those corporations, they're all approved by the government. That's why you have all those long chemical names on the package when you're reading it. That's why they're feeding you corn sugar now, high fructose corn syrup, which is actually banned in a lot of other countries, I might add. And i got to tell you, I'm sick and tired of all these corn sugar commercials on TV that are saying, your body can't tell the difference. Yeah, my body can. 
I can eat cane sugar without any problem, but if I have fructose, I go right into hypoglycemia. So don't sit there with your very expensive ad campaign and tell me that people can't tell the difference, that your body can't tell the difference. I can. And by the way, soft drinks with real cane sugar in them do taste better than the stuff with the fructose in there. There is a difference in the taste. So this propaganda is just there to preserve somebody's corporate profits. And when these government officials come into people who are trying to grow their own food at a time when food security is at an all-time low, what what are they thinking about this stuff? Is this part of their plan to starve us all to death so that we'll have to go to the government for, for, for a loaf of bread? And they'll say, well, you can have the bread here, but you're going to have to agree to a carbon tax and you're going to have to give us your kids to go invade Iran. Controlling the population by controlling the food. Is that the plan? Is that the path to dictatorship? Because as a, as a farm kid myself, I am offended by this. All right, we're going to go to the phones. Clinton, Las Vegas, you were the one who called my attention to this. Um, I got your mail about a follow-up. I haven't had a chance to look at that yet because I was doing uh, uh, the intro to the show here. But what's the latest word on what's going up there? Well, there was a guy from Fox News who uh, he, he, he actually went on it. And uh, I'm very disappointed, Mike. I was hoping that I'd get to call her a bitch on the air first. Oh, oh you did. Uh, my show! I get to be abusive uh, ahead of you. Yeah, well, you know, and uh, well, not only the corn syrup thing. Actually, diabetes is actually, and the media won't even talk about this. Not, diabetes and cancer has doubled in the last ten years. Yes, I mean, this is mainstream. You know, uh, this is mainstream science. I mean, everybody knows this. Whoever looks into it, uh, but no, this was a uh, Mormon. This was a. Uh, a uh, Mormon, uh, say what you want about it, but I don't think they're linked to Al Qaeda in any way. Uh, and uh, they're they're uh, they're just growing their own uh, stuff, and they were going to hold a picnic. And uh, here comes the government here to uh, no, you cannot do this. And uh, how I how I turned on to this was I was looking for raw milk here in Nevada, and I, I was looking uh, I was looking it up. You can't even buy raw milk in Hawaii. There's no listing at all. Uh, uh, we, we had our last yeah, raw, yeah. Di- uh, raw dairy was shut down, I think, about uh, two years ago, and now all of our milk comes in from off-island. It's all got frequent flyer miles, and uh, I actually avoid dairy products now. I remember when I lived in Washington State where the dairy was just down the road, or when I was a kid in New Hampshire where the dairy was in your backyard and how fresh everything was. And here in Hawaii, one of the really bad things, the seafood is really good because it's from the immediate vicinity, but... You know, everything else, you know, meat and dairy, it's, it's so old by the time it gets to the store, and, and you can tell that it's that way. And we're getting the same thing here. They're trying to shut down the local farmer co-ops, and, and it's the same attitude. You will buy your food from the corporations, you shrinewent. And, and, and it's a way of forcing dependence. We, they're trying to force us to be dependent on corporations and force us to be dependent on the government for our little slip of paper. It's just like the British with their little stamp act. You are dependent on pleasing the government to conduct your business every day because without that little stamp, you're not allowed to do anything. And they're doing exactly the same thing here. And again, being a farm kid, this is how I was raised. It's time for dinner. Go out to the field and grab me something. And we go out and grab it, bring it in, cook it. Nobody I know ever died from eating farm-grown food. I know a lot of people who've been made very, very sick by that stuff that comes out of the supermarkets. And, you know, I, I am so offended by this video. I cannot even begin to tell you. Yeah, and uh, Mike, can I say that uh, uh, I, I, it's one of the reasons I'm looking at Costa Rica because you just see, you know, every other house has a fruit stand in front of it where people just grow their own food. And uh, they actually have, uh, you know, the way I remember it when I was a kid. I grew up on raw milk. And, yeah, you know, we got to take a break. Around. Clint, we got to finish up here because i got to get on to screaming about the global economy. Okay, uh, let me finish up. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, uh, the, the, the cops showed up and the cops asked her, uh, do you have any, uh, you know, uh, uh, do you have a warrant for arrest or do you have a uh, search warrant or anything? And she said no, and the cops escorted her off the property. But they, she would not even let these people use it for compost, if you can believe that. Uh, okay, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. So this woman simply came in. She had no official documentation saying that there was a court order for the destruction of private property. 
I don't know. I seem to remember something in the Bill of Rights about, you know, uh, uh, due process for your property to be taken and destroyed, which is basically what she did. I hope they sue uh, her. No, that's, that's, that's the you from Al-Qaeda, Mike. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, can't, we can't have that anymore. Yeah. Uh, no, and, uh, uh, but I, I, I've got one last thing to say, and I'm just going to say it. Uh, when it comes to raw milk, you know, I, I've lived on raw milk, and every time I've, man, once you've had raw milk, I can't, I can't go back to anything else. There, there's something wrong with the other milk. Uh, and uh, I just love the natural stuff. And uh, so uh, with that, Mike, I'll let you go on to other issues. But, All right. Well, thanks uh, thank enough. You for posting. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks an awful lot. Yeah, I had raw milk as a kid. I had cows in the backyard and in the barn. We made our own butter. We had chickens that laid our own eggs. That's the way you're supposed to do it. But the modern American corporatocracy, the fascist dictatorship we live in, is they're going to grab all the raw materials, ship them across 16 time zones, run them through a special chemical process that has a patent on it so that somebody can collect a little royalty on their intellectual property. Then they put it back in the store and throw another tax on it and say, here, this is what you're going to have. And time and time again, we're seeing that what is being prepared for us by the corporations is not the highest quality. We saw that with that documentary yesterday about the light bulbs. They're intentionally producing crappy products, so we have to go back and buy more from whatever. I think a good example of that is aspartame which is sold as a, a diet aid. You know, you can eat all you want and not gain weight, but that's not true because aspartame actually triggers craving for carbohydrates. That's why the supermarkets have those wonderful little deals where there'll be a big bag of some kind of processed corn chip loaded with, uh, uh, not aspartame, MSG. And, um, uh, and, and it's bundled up with all these uh, sodas uh, that have the aspartame in there. Diet sodas and these big corn chips. Because they know the more you drink the soda with the aspartame, the more you will crave the carbohydrates in the chips. And now they sell more product. It's all about making you buy more product. The, the monosodium glutamate it's, is claimed to be a flavor enhancer. It isn't that. It suppresses the message in your brain that says you've eaten enough. And that's why literally for people who are, are not eating enough, like in, like in uh, uh, old people's homes or hospitals, if they're not eating enough, they'll dose the food. They'll, it's a prescription medicine, monosodium glutamate. They dose the food to make them eat more. And the food manufacturers are putting it in the food in the store. They, they know people are trying to find it and avoid it, so they put all these different weird names. There's about 30 or 40 different names they use to hide the presence of monosodium glutamate in the food because they know if, if they can get it into you, you will eat more. You will gain weight. You'll be, still be hungry. You'll go back and you'll buy more. And they make more money off of you. And they don't care about the health effects on you. That's the reason the United States has an obesity epidemic. It's got nothing to do with our lifestyle or sedentary. The food is loaded with chemicals that make you gain weight. Aspartame, MSG, synthetic bovine growth hormone. Remember the fury when those two reporters over at Fox News tried to go public and said that stuff they're shooting the cows with that you are then drinking in the milk and eating in the meat, it, it harms your health. And they got fired for it. And they went to court for wrongful termination, and the courts said, and I am not kidding you, that there is no law that says the corporate news media has to report the truth to you. And so reporters have to lie when they're ordered to by management, and if they refuse, management can fire them for refusing to lie when told to do so. It's a damning indictment of our corporate media here, which is, of course, why you're all listening to this show. That's how completely around the bend into this fascist dictatorship this country has gone. The corporations are going to feed you stuff to make you want to eat more. It's bad for your health. They don't care. It's all about profit and bottom line. It's all it is. It's money junkieism. They don't care if they hurt you. They don't care if they make products that kill you or hurt you or erase your data after seven months. They don't care. They just want your back in the store. Buy a new one of something. So watch these two videos if you have not seen them. There's the first one is the light bulb conspiracy. It's on a permanent link at whatreallyhappened.com. Over on the left, you'll, you'll see it immediately. And this one that just went up here today about this picnic. This is insane for the government to go into people who want to grow and eat their own food on their own land, and they're saying, you can't do that. You will buy and eat food from the corporations. You will be dependent 
on the agricultural business concerns. You will eat the chemicals that we put in the food for you to eat. Sig Heil, Sig Heil, Sig Heil. And no, I'm not overreacting here because I dare anybody, I dare anybody to show me a case where Adolf Hitler went on to anybody's land in Germany and said, you're not allowed to grow and eat your own food on your own property. I dare you. You won't find it. That's something the U.S. government has invented. Sig Heil. We'll be back to talk about the global economy after these commercials. 